to this is Margaret Pinard. Thank you for coming to my channel. Today I am very excited to announce an original book tag. And not like the one in September that was like impossibly hard to do because it was like 30 questions. No. This one has a specific purpose and it is time appropriate, meaning it's seasonal. It's called Yola Book Afloat PDX because I'm sure other people have done Yola Book Afloat once. What is Yola Book Afloat? Okay, let me break it down. Yola, like Yule. Boca, like book. Float, like flood. So this is the Icelandic term for a tradition they have of exchanging books as Christmas gifts on Christmas Eve because it was a very special thing to have books on an island that had no trees, right? And then going home to enjoy these books into the night because it's like very dark that far in the Arctic Circle. Nights last forever in the winter, so it was a real treat to be able to come together, exchange things among your community, feel valued and thought of, and then go home for a cozy hot chocolate and uh, read by the fireplace, I imagine, in my ideal Icelandic Yola Boca Float world. So... I learned about this, I think, on the, the interweb several years ago, and what I did is I first made this into a book fair. So there have been uh, two book fairs called Eel Book of Flood PDX in Portland. PDX is just the abbreviation for Portland, Oregon. They were fantastic. I helped organize them with my friend Elizabeth Mitchell. And what we did this year, our third year, is that we are making it virtual and kicking it up a notch, making it a literary festival. We have 34 authors participating, we have 14 panels, we have authors from all genres, all ages, all experiences, all topics, and we've got this diversity of experience to bring to you for free on YouTube. And so I'm celebrating this with a book tag. I know, low key, right? So I think I've got eight questions and I'll go through them um, and <laughs> explain them. So I've told you what the tradition is, and I've told you about the fair. So here are the questions. Number one, the name. A lot of people have difficulty pronouncing this name the first time. Uh, hopefully I've helped that with my little key. But I'd love to hear a pr unpronounceable or difficult to pronounce word that you love, that you're just charmed by. This made me think of the book that has words that are untranslatable. It was like a little sort of coffee table gift book. And uh, my favorite from there was tsundoku. Tsundoku, which is Japanese for having so many books that you will never read, but wanting more <laughs> and having them around you and having that be a great feeling. At least that's what I understood. So if you're a Japanese speaker and want to clarify, feel free down in the comments. But tsundoku is my favorite unpronounceable word at the moment. Question number two is the tradition. Gifting books to friends and staying home to read them. So what is an alternative tradition or retelling that you love? So for this one, I went with the turnip jack-o'-lanterns. So this is actually the original tradition, but for Americans who are used to pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns for Halloween, I found out about the turnips fairly recently, and so I loved this. Basically, if you've ever seen Bernadette Banner's channel, you know that she has that as her little icon. It's adorable. Basically, it started with turnips. They're sort of like big potato size, and that's what the Scots would carve out and put lights in as a All Souls Day tradition. I don't know if it's superstition. I don't, I'm not sure what the purpose of it is exactly. Remembrance, maybe. But I like that, the turnip jack-o'-lantern jack for the, the Scottish tradition. Question number three, adaptation. So in the same way that Americans took the turnips and turned it into pumpkins, because gourds are more of an American thing, uh, we took Yola Boca Float and made it Yola Boca Float PDX, which is short for Portland. For PDX, we made this into a book fair because we're book lovers that want to do something regional and supportive of indie authors. Our mission is to create some conviviality and do sort of like writer community, writer lifts. What is an adaptation of something you loved that turned out even better than the original? Or as much enjoyment as the original? And I had to think about this one because there's lots of like books to movies that I'm like, eh. And what I came up with was a 
book to movie to YouTube video. Whether these pleasing attentions proceed from the impulse of the moment or are they the result of previous study? I follow someone called C. Tippy, and they have two videos in particular that over the past few pandemic months I've returned to again and again just to make me giggle. They're basically like someone ripping on the Pride and Prejudice mo movies uh, with digital video expertise, and she does it so excellently. What do you recommend to encourage affection? Dancing. Even if one's partner is barely tolerable. I'll link her videos down below. Those are my two favorites. And that is definitely an adaptation that I enjoy as much as the original. Question four is the mood. So the mood of taking your cup of hot cocoa and sitting by the fireplace and reading a book that someone you love just gave you. That's pretty good, right? So we're trying to recreate that mood. It's also kind of associated with the Swedish word, which is hygge, which is a domestic tasks or pride in small mm, things that you have to do, but doing them without rancor or resentment, just enjoying that you have a home and shelter and enjoying feathering your nest, sort of, right? What is the coziest read or to read for you this winter? What is your coziest book that you've read or book that you expect to read. And for me, this one is going to be, it's a little counterintuitive because of the name. The name is Unsheltered by Barbara Kingsolver. And I just recently was combing my list for like a Hugo book. And this one, the synopsis, I don't have it in front of me, but I'll put it up in editing. Looking forward to that soon. Number five is the discovery. So one of the big things that Yolo Boca Flow PDX offers is that we help you discover new writers, right? So instead of chasing the latest 26th book in a series or, you know, waiting and waiting for your favorite author and they're in a dry spell, what have you. Um, this is about discovering new authors so that you have more diverse sources for fiction or not fiction perhaps as well as just supporting people who are um, not as rich and famous as maybe these others that you know but still are working to craft great stories and get them to readers to enjoy. So the question for you is what's the name of a new author you've discovered this year that you love? And I had a short list new authors that I discovered but there's like 10 so if I had to narrow it down my favorite one to recommend to other people that might not be already known. I've already done a highlight on a couple of these. So I will say Kathleen Jamie. And she has a book called Surfacing, which is poems, but more like a mix of media that touch on the topic of nature and environment and modern living just lots of really cool things. And one of my favorite tropes, if you will, is when authors can take disparate concepts and weave them together to make them more meaningful to more people. And she really does that. So I really enjoyed that collection. Question six is the setting. So for Yola Boca Float, obviously the setting is Iceland, where this tradition originated. And for our question, we're gonna broaden it a bit because the theme is more like Scandinavian in general. It's a deep dark setting in the winter. You think of the Arctic Circle, you think of the long long nights when there's only a couple hours of daylight for example and what that does to your psyche and sort of that gloom or scariness or whatever. So opposite of your cozy read, what's the place, what's the book that has the deepest, darkest setting in whatever way you want to interpret that, that you've read, that you would recommend. Or maybe not recommend. And the one I thought of is actually In the Neighborhood. It takes place in Greenland, if anyone knows how many how many books take, take place in Greenland, right? It's Smilla's Sense of Snow. And I must have read this like five years ago now, but I remember the movie from a long time ago and being like, eh, it's a thriller, it's violent, whatever. And then when I read the book, I was very impressed with the style, the learning about a place I'd never known, the history of a place I'd never known. I studied some of the Native American history in America and the interactions between historical 
uh, Native Americans and the U.S. government, which is tragic, and it actually has a parallel in Scandinavia. Um, there's a Frozen video that touches a little bit on the history of the Sami and Norway, and that is fascinating, but there's also a more recent uh, version of this in Greenland with Denmark, and so there's a tension between the Native population, the Indigenous population, and the government and how they've been treated. That was a really great book for someone who knew nothing about the area, and it had a deep dark setting, so yes. Question number seven is The Hot Cocoa. The prompt for this is a book that comforted you during a long night. Long night, right? It doesn't have to be one night. I'm gonna say How to Survive the Loss of a Love by, I think, Harriet, not Harriet Lerner. I'll put the author up here. And it's a tiny book. It's one of these like very cheap paperbacks from the 70s that you don't expect to last long, but I've come over multiple editions of it and I get them because they disintegrate or I loan them out and they disappear and it's so good it's poems that are like just snatches of conversation about someone having a confrontation with their better self it sounds like anyway it's hard to explain it's someone sort of processing a breakup or a loss of anything basically going through a transition or change sharing how to get over that how to shift their thinking how to evaluate things with distance and it was just so so valuable to me for a period of years that I would recommend that to anybody. How to Survive the Loss of a Love, if you can find a copy of it. Or maybe I'll send one of my extra copies if someone really wants it, if really needs it right now, comment down below. Maybe I'll be inspired. And the final question, number eight, is The Gift. So what is an indie pub, an indie, an independently published book that you will gift someone with this winter. So for this holiday, I'm gonna be gifting Greer McAllister's Arctic Fury because it's such a perfect winter read. It's about women and Arctic explorations. And if you ever listen to the historical fiction Happy Hour with Liana and Carrie, then you will know it's also maybe about cannibalism. So it's super adventurous. And I think that that is going to be some that is going to be going to someone this Christmas. So we've got the name, the tradition, the adaptation, the mood, the discovery, the setting, the hot cocoa. And the gift. I hope you enjoy this Yola Book of Load PDX book tag. And for the original taggies, so to close out, I'm going to tag. <laughs> no, that's not in there. All right, so I'm gonna narrow it down to five. I got so many people I want to tag, but I got two more tags coming that I'll do in December. So if you're not on this one, you can do it anyway. It's booktube. It's not. I'm not a government. But I will specifically call out Scally Dandling about the books. That's Roz, Amrita by the book, and Bree from Locked Booktician, and Reads by Rachel, and Paula Guerrero. So that is five, and I hope to see you do this tag. I will put the information about the literary festival down below. All the panels are up waiting for people to visit, so if you want to put them on your watch later, if you're interested in that topic, to be reminded, that's an easy way to do it. You can also visit the website, yolabookafloatpdx.com. We have a schedule, and you can add it to your calendar if you are so cool as to use Google Calendar and, like, live in the 21st century, so... <laughs> yes, so thanks for stopping by. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy doing this tag, and it gives you a feeling of community and reaching out across the digital divides during this long, isolated winter that we have. So hope to see you at Yola Book of Load PDX. Thanks.